also a warm welcome for Eric O'Brien, our onstage host today. Do you recognize Eric's voice from the afternoon show on WSNX 104.5? He is now, you can hear me. This isn't my presentation. No, it is actually. Um, so thank you. Eric is a huge Ted fan and early on I asked him if he would be the onstage host and he said yes. And so we're delighted to have him join us today. So thank you, Eric. Well, I'm delighted to finally meet you. When I started this project eight months ago, I didn't know anyone in Grand Rapids, literally. Uh, my wife and I have recently moved to the lake shore from Texas, and so, whoop, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I thought this might be a good way to join in service of the local community and to make a few new friends. And um, that worked. <laughs> so maybe you guys wanna come over and have some beer and barbecue at our house, yeah? I'm not from here. <laughs> well, I'm gonna try to talk fast to get through a lot of information, but I wanna start by saying this has all been done for you. 10,000 volunteer hours have been put into creating this first TED-style experience in Grand Rapids just for you. And that it came to being so quickly, I think is also a wonderful reflection on you. Eight months ago, TEDx Grand Rapids was just an idea. And I want you to wrap your head around that. Just an idea. And I have been absolutely blown away, and you should too, by how this has arisen so quickly. And that, that this can happen here is proof that there's something really special in West Michigan. And one of the reasons that my wife and I decided to stay here. The story of TEDx Grand Rapids begins with this man. Nick, and all of this is his idea, although when you see him today, he will tell you that it has become much grander than he ever expected. But this was his idea, and um, when you see him today, tell him thank you for being the innovator of TEDx Grand Rapids. This is a picture of me and Nick. <laughs> you will notice that Nick is much taller than I am. <clears throat> this is a picture that was taken for the Grand Rapids uh, press, and we are really grateful for all the media who have helped spread this. Um, however, to do this and make our heads the, the same height, I had to stand on two artichoke cans, so. <laughs> Lovely. Um, Nick and I met for the first time on September 15th, September 15th of last year. I actually found him through a Google search. I was looking for the TED community locally. He had started a Facebook page. We got together. I said, hey, you know, how can I help? He said, well, since you're a Tedster, um, would you like to hold the license for this and, you know, help with leading it? And I said, well, yeah, I'm new in town. Let's do that and see what happens. And so that's how it all got started. The first order of business was to find out sort of when, when in the year we were going to have this. I think I'm gonna go long, but that's gonna be okay. <laughs> so once we had figured out the best time to have it, we knew that we were gonna need a whole lot of help. And so uh, we put the word out on Facebook and Twitter that we were hosting open meetings every two weeks at local establishments. And anybody who wanted to come could come and bring their inspiration and we would see what happened. And what I found is that West Michigan is filled with great people and a lot of great people came to those meetings and these are some of those people. These are the people that showed up early on. These are not all of the volunteers, but they're the ones that showed up and became part of the leadership team. And you'll notice the leadership team today because they're all wearing shirts like mine, which are all made out of bamboo, which is pretty cool. So Kurt is a jack of all trades and he was a personal help to me on a lot of different things. Nikki manages the volunteers. So all the people you see around today helping you in the red shirts, that was her responsibility. Todd put together the reception, which is gonna be fantastic for you tonight. Grant managed design, and I have learned that design is a different word for everything. 
Um, and so um, he had his hands full, and he was very, very busy. But luckily, he had Eric working with him. And if you don't know Eric, he is Grant's twin brother by a different mother. And um, if you followed us on Facebook or Twitter, you were actually talking to Eric. And the, the videos that you see when I walked on and everybody else walks on, Eric did those. We're grateful for that. Adam managed our ticketing system. A long story about how I picked a ticketing system in Germany and how that was complicated. Um, but Adam dealt with all of that, and it must have worked because you're all here. Val curated everything across the street, and Amy started very early helping us with our content development and branding. So we got started, and then the next big question was, okay, really where are we gonna have this thing? What's the venue? Because without a venue and a real date, we couldn't start inviting speakers. And so Nick and I looked all over the place, we looked at everything, but from the moment we walked in here, in this theater, I was sure that this was the place to have it. It's an absolutely amazing space. It's just beautiful. Yeah. So it comes to pass that Kurt's wife, Angela, is on the board at the Civic, and she introduces me to Bruce, who's the executive director of the Civic. And so I walked in, and I talked to Bruce, and I said, look, we want to do this thing. What do you think? And he said, well, the Grand Rapids Civic Theater has been a center for entertainment and education for generations. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Let's do it. And I said, great, but here's an issue. I don't know how to do this. <clears throat> Never done anything like this before. Do you know anybody that can help? And he got up, walked out of his office, came back literally five seconds later with Keith, who offices in the Civic, and Keith puts on all sorts of events of this magnitude. And so everything that you've seen, see going on in here, from the stuff on the ceiling and the lights and this amazing mural and all of this has, done, has been done by Keith and his team. So we're grateful to them and everybody at the Grand Rapids Civic Theater. So it sounds like it's going pretty good, right? Well, at the end of last year, we had a place and a venue and a pretty cool team, and we had built a digital presence that we had wired together fairly quickly, but we were missing a few key things, like those things, sponsors, speakers, and all of you. So I was a little anxious at the end of the year, but luckily the new year brought all kinds of good things, and some of those are these good people. <laughs> now, I love this picture of Bill, and I used it without his permission. But you may recognize Bill from his role in Art Prize and Momentum and Five by Five Night, which I'm a huge fan of. But you may not know that uh, he's actually a TEDster and has been attending TED for some time. And so I met Bill and I said, Bill, we want to have a TED style experience in West Michigan. And he introduced me to some folks and helped me move this forward. And one of the people he introduced me to was Jenny. Now, if you don't know Jenny, you're the only person in the audience that doesn't. She knows everybody, and so that was a windfall for us, and she connected us with sponsors and speakers, and it was just amazing. And I was actually going to use this picture of Jenny in my presentation, but I decided not to. <laughs> <clears throat> so we took Jenny and Bill, and we put them on something we called our Board of Advisors, and then we put, we put out a call to all of the rest of the Tedsters and around the area. We said, help us, please do this, and give us some advice and help connect us, and they did. And those are these people, and we're thankful to them. And then there's these folks. Now, this was absolutely unbelievable, because I'm going to start by telling you that some of these sponsors came to us and said, how can we help? And actually, if there's a tagline for West Michigan, it should say, West Michigan, how can we help? Because that's the experience I had as a new guy in town. Now, remember, I didn't know anybody. And they said, well, this seems pretty groovy. Let's do this. And so we ran a flat sponsorship model. We asked $5,000 from all of our financial sponsors, which they gave. And in addition, a lot of these folks gave even more. And as an example of that steel case, who provides the, and there's the right word that Michael told me about to say, but I'm going to say environments because I forget the, uh, I don't remember the name of it. Sorry, Michael. Um, but steel case provides all of the environments, all the furniture for TED and TED Global. And um, I didn't realize the relationship was so deep, and they said, can we also provide the same things for you here? And they did. And so everything you see here, all the furniture you see here and across the street and at the reception tonight, have I said it's going to be awesome? They provided that. So we are really grateful for them and all of our financial sponsors that have helped us pull this together. And then there's un and the in-kind sponsors. So additionally, these folks did the same thing. They came to us and they said, hey, we hear you're doing this great thing. How can we help? And we said, well... Let's just see what arises and let's see what's needed. And all of these companies, 
uh, gave to make this event happen. So when you see them and you see the sponsors, please tell them thank you because it really has been an unbelievable experience. It, it's, a, it's a collaboration story that I will really tell for the rest of my life. So again, seems like everything's going great. Now we've got sponsors and we're starting to get speakers, but I'll tell you that this is an all volunteer part-time staff that has done this. I'm the only full-time volunteer and that wasn't intentional. And, and so by about mid-March, we started picking up some real steam and um, we got overwhelmed. We were really overwhelmed. We didn't have enough people and enough skill. All of this was self-arising. And so we put the word out. We said, we need some more good people. And more good people showed up and these are them. So Sarah took over interior design and all of the spaces that you see here across the street and at the reception uh, tonight were under her control. Mike Byers came in and took on project management. And as you would expect in a, in a group of all volunteer creative people, we had a lot of ideas. So we had to take those and actually get them to conclusion uh, on time and under budget. He was our bulldog for that and he was really helpful. And the other person here is Jen. And Jennifer, we call the velvet hammer. Um, she, she gets stuff done. And uh, we put her in charge of one of the best commodities, which was our speakers. And so there's a whole team of people that we put on the speaker hosting team. And we gave each of the speakers an assistant. Now, internally, we called them wranglers. But all of a sudden, we're talking about it. And I think it's a Texas thing. But so we have a team of wranglers for our speakers so they don't get away. And uh, her whole team does that. And then Josh came on and put in hours and hours and hours of uh, filming and editing. For the innovation videos you see here, he created the video at the beginning of the show. And then there's 20 more of the innovation videos of local innovators on our site. So all of these people brought all of this together. And of course, there's our speakers. Our speakers are fantastic. And you may not know this about TED and TEDx speakers, but they do it pro bono. So they're here in your community providing their wisdom to you as a gift. And we are really grateful to absolutely every one of them. And specifically, I wanna call out Christina Keller, who I called uh, two days ago and said, hi, can you be ready to do a 15 minute talk in two days? And she said yes, and she did a wonderful job. So there's you, there's the speakers, there's the sponsors, the volunteers. How about a big round of applause for everybody? But wait, there's more. I would love to spend some time talking to you about how this all came to pass. We used some techniques. I played with some things around managing, uh, self-organizing, neo adhocracies And I want to tell you the stories about what worked and what didn't work, which was a lot. Uh, but I don't have time for that. So I hope we have a chance to do that in a different venue. But what I want to talk to you about is what exactly you are now a part of. Because it's more than just a one-day experience. This is a portal to a global phenomenon. All over the planet, amazing human beings just like you are doing exactly this, and now you're connected to them through this meshwork of TEDx events. Right now, there's five other events happening on the planet in four other countries. So you're now a part of that, and that's a big deal. I'm gonna tell you a story that, that shows that. So this is Angela, and she created the uh, underlying design of our X theme. And this is one of her initial designs for that. And this happened early in January. And so I was inspired by that. And I created this in February, just sort of on a whim in celebration of the Chinese Lunar New Year. I was trying to just sort of get our design stuff going. Well, Nick thought this was pretty groovy. And he sent it to Ted. Well, Ted posted it on the TEDx blog, where it's been seen 11,000 times since February. Well, that was pretty cool. Some of the people that saw that are in Qatar. They're Carnegie Mellon students in Qatar at CMU Qatar. They were inspired by my design and they created this design where the X's represent people. And the X's are of all different sizes and they're darker X's and they're lighter colored X's. And their idea is that here's the whole world with no boundaries. So that's pretty cool. So let me wrap it around again. A woman in Grand Rapids did something, created something that made a difference in the Middle East with a group of people that are trying to break down the barriers that segregate human beings. That's awesome. What happens here in Grand Rapids is affecting the world. And what happens out there comes back and affects us. 
Already things are happening right here at TEDx Grand Rapids that are touching the rest of the world. We are streaming this. The, the talks up here are being turned into videos that will be posted on our website. And I'm going to go to TED Global uh, in the UK on July 10th and represent, thank you, TEDx Grand Rapids, with 69 other people that are doing TEDx's around the world. So we're a part of something here. It's just not a one-day event. And you've heard this from all of our speakers already. Something amazing is happening in the world, and we're a part of it. Me, us, we, the world, we're all connected, and we can't ignore this anymore. I think TEDx Grand Rapids is a way that West Michigan can now step onto the world stage and say, hey, we're here. How can we help? So, how about we do this again next year? <laughs> then we will. Uh, if you're interested in sponsoring next year, please come to our website, slash 2012. We're looking for sponsors. As you heard, Complete Genomics has already signed up to be one of our financial sponsors. The rumor on the grapevine is we already have two other financial sponsors, so I'm really grateful for that. And I'm also grateful to you for investing a day of your life into co-creating this experience in West Michigan. Life is really, really short. We each get about 30,000 days of life if we're lucky, and some of us a lot less. Today is my 17,000th, 199th day, and I am so grateful that I got to spend it with you. Thank you.